what Krishna wants you to do. But we have started our own business, our own family, our own everything. And the Hindus, Krishna Kanshi, we are also Hindus, but <laughs> Hindus means we mean particularly those who follow the rules of the religion without knowing the purpose. They are called Hindus. Mandir jane ka hai, ye karne ka hai, wo karne hai, but they don't understand. So, they actually, you know, have made a virtue out of this sinful activity. Just like doing your own travel business in a company, when the company is, let us say, producing something else, it is considered bad illegal activity. You can be fired. You can also be put in prison for that. Similarly, we are doing our illegal activities in the name of family, work and all that. And the Hindus, they have made it into karma yoga. They say, apna kaam karo. You just do your own work. Everything will be all right. This is concoction. Is this point clear? So karma yoga actually means to dedicate whatever we are doing, to do it in line with Krishna's plan for the universe. Just like in a company, the owner has a plan and we just have to be a part of the plan. Although it may be difficult to understand, Krishna has a plan for the whole universe. Not only now, not only for this lifetime of Brahma, but untold lifetimes of Brahma, he has already made everything. It's just going on, an autopilot. This is God. Brahma's one, like one Brahma's lifetime is 311 trillion and 40 billion years. And even if you took 311 trillion Brahmas, still for all of that, God has actually planned everything. He knows what's happening. It's very, very easy for him. Just like in a family, the mother knows the child, what time he'll wake up, what he will do, what mischief next he'll start. She knows everything. Similarly, Krishna knows. He tells Krishna, Arjuna, many lifetimes you have taken. I remember everything you don't remember. Just like this fellow, whatever he did, his mother knows. <laughs> Isn't it? But he doesn't know. The mother will say, oh, when he was two years old, he broke this. And he broke that. In the similar way, Krishna knows the activities of all of us. So the human life is very important. It's very difficult to realize this because people feel it's so much stressful, so much, so many things to do. If I don't complete my MCA, what is the point? Isn't it? But factually, we are not the bodies. And the bodies are acting according to laws of nature. Even if you, you, the soul, even if you didn't do anything, this body will act. It's a very complicated world. So very, very difficult, even great sages cannot understand. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, hmm, hi karmana gatihi. The path of karma is very deep. Even the great sages cannot understand. So in Kali Yuga, particularly, but in any Yuga it is available, if one will chant Krishna's name, then one can become a perfect yogi. Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, either in the form of Kirtan or Japa, but mainly Japa, then we can become a yogi. This is very surprising. Because the yogi has to do so many things. Yama, niyama, pratyahara. You see. And the process is very difficult. One has to completely give up eating, sleeping. And one has to go to a forest. If suddenly you are walking on the street and all the power goes, everybody is afraid, even in a city. And imagine in the night, darkness of the jungle. 
how can you stay oh the side the tiger is coming the lion is coming and you know all these snakes and all the but the yogi how is he able to sit and meditate because they have transcended the gross bodily conception of life they are also transcending the subtle body that is not not imaginable even in kali yuga so to become a yogi is not so easy but lord chaitanya in this age has guaranteed that if you chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare you can become a yogi and you can chant when you are walking on the street you can chant when you are lying in the bed as soon as you wake up in the morning you can chant you must <laughs> and when you can chant when you are taking shower you can chant when you are so taking prasadam you can chant any there are no rules and regulations for this and by simple process of chanting you can become actually a yogi but there are 10 rules that you should not break when chanting oh careless chanting is also an offense so one has to one has to know that this process of chanting is same as yoga process ashtanga yoga process and we must chant hari krishna very nicely and in the beginning you, you like you heard today you have to chant hari krishna so by hearing you chant and by chanting you also hear more today you come achanak you came by chance but then you'll come again and again and again if you're fortunate so uh krishna is explaining in this verse that people think that when they see this form of krishna 200 form that is here we are also here but he is appearing in a little differently because in a different mood the same krishna in the 200 form with the flute people think it sometimes it's imagination isn't it i when there was one politician and mp and some a famous person he gave one interview somewhere in london and he said hinduism is, is very very open minded you can imagine any form of god you can imagine him as having elephant face you can imagine him as you know uh having um, moon on his head or you can imagine him just like uh, on the cross so we, we can imagine anything that that is the greatness is a fool number 1 but he is thinking like you know he is speaking very wonderfully so he is saying we are better than your religion because in our religion you can imagine in any way so he should have been asked the question if it god is merely a matter of imagination then why is it that same imagination is going on why no new form has come isn't it the same krishna is being worshiped even the demigod same shiva same ganesh why not some other form why don't you create of course we cannot underestimate hindus they can do that also but you know then really the point is that it's all there so uh this is not imagination because the great yogis actually have seen in their meditation the transcendental forms and they have revealed it they have described it and these paintings and you know the deity forms are made according to those descriptions always the same way krishna is never imagined in any other form is always the same way so uh to understand people actually don't know who is god you see in fact as soon as you say god it means you don't know who is god isn't it if you say neighbor or if you say prime minister and somebody says who is prime minister i don't prime minister what is his name i don't know but prime minister that means you don't know as soon as you the only thing you know is is a, that there is a prime minister and you don't know who it is how he looks and all that you don't know so when people said god 
and say nothing more, it means they do not know who is God. Whereas in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna presents himself and also in all the other authentic literatures it's presented that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So who is this Krishna? Why people, because many people have an idea that Krishna is the avatar of Vishnu and many people have the idea that Krishna is, you know, the other, everybody, God is formless and from the formless God, so many forms are coming like that there. That's not true. From form, you can go to formless. If there is a house, you, building, you can destroy the building. But from farmless, you cannot go to farm unless somebody in farm upper, you know, works on it. So farm is more fundamental than farmlessness. So Krishna has got a farm but what is that form made of? Suppose if you say Krishna's form is made of matter, like this table is made of wood, then one day or other it will be destroyed. No material object has ever permanently existed, including the universe, even scientifically and according to Vedic knowledge, the Srishti and Pralaya. Scientists also accept there was a Srishti. There was a time it was not. And people, scientists also speak about heat death of the universe. It's a thermodynamic principle. So, uh, therefore, this idea is there, the appearance and the development of the universe. So, everything in this universe, including the universe, is temporary. So, if Krishna's body is also made of matter, then that is also temporary then how there can be an eternal God? Isn't it? Therefore, Krishna is saying here, Parambhava Majananto, that people do not know my superior nature. What is that superior nature? That superior nature is that Krishna is, from Krishna all the energies come, but Krishna himself is not made of those energies. A very difficult point to understand. Like Prabhupada gave the example, there is the sun, light, there is the sun planet, and then there is sun god. Similarly, if you have, if you have firewood and you make a fire, What is fire? Even devotees will say, the fire is that what we see, the flame is a fire. But actually, that is the result of the wood burning. So wood is the source of the fire. Isn't it? Huh? Right. Fire is not independently existing. But the nature of wood it produces fire, but it is different. In this way, everything in the universe, Krishna is the source. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartade. This is a subject matter for thinking about. The devotee Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita so that all of us can learn how to think about Krishna because Krishna is saying, I'm like this, I'm like this, I'm like this. We don't have to imagine. Bhagavad Gita is the only book in the whole world in which God has personally spoken. So it's a very, very important book. Right? So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Ajananto Parambhavam or Parambhavam Ajananto. Ajananto means they do not know. Jananto means no. Ajananto means they don't know. Param Bhavam means, Param means superior, Bhavam means nature. 
द्वाविमो पुरुषो लोके क्षर अक्षर एव चरह सर्वा भूता कूटस्थ अक्षर मुच्यते यस्माक्षरमतीतोहम अक्षरात अपिचो उत्तम अतोस्मी लोके वेदे च पुरुषस् प्रसिद्ध यस्माक्षरमतीतोहम अक्षरात अपिचो उत्तम अतोस्मी लोके वेदे च पुरुष प्रतितः पुरुषोत्तम सिंगिंग कृष्ण सिंगिंग अतोस्मी लोके वेदे सो इसे यस्मा क्षरम अतिहम ऐम सुपीरियर टू द पीपल इन द मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड हु आर कॉन्स्टेंटली कमिंग एंड गोइंग बॉर्न एंड डेड अक्षरा तपि चोत्तम एंड इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड एवरीबडी इज इटर्नल लाइक गॉड हियर आल्सो वी आर इटर्नल वी आर चेंजिंग ड्रेस इज इट यू आर यू यू हैड बिफोर some other dress when you were children now you have got some other dress but you are the same person so even the conditioned soul is eternal but is changing dress in the spiritual world they are eternal and they don't change their dress so i am better than the people who are constantly changing their dress but he says i am also better than those who are eternal akshara tapichotam atosmi loke vedeche loke means upanishad vedesha so therefore i am celebrated in the vedas and the upanishads purushottama that i am the supreme krishna is saying does it make sense or it doesn't make sense making sense so this is authentic knowledge about krishna we are not simply manufacturing this is all there and we are prabhupada has presented we are repeating to our capacity this is very 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 important god is not to be imagined many generally people think that when some sadhu is there some sanyasi then he has achieved something and he has some experience and he has seen god and whatever he says we should hear that's all right but still whatever he says must be in line with shastra you cannot simply say something suppose i say i have been to america then i can describe america yes but what i describe must be in line with what is in the books if you say in new york city there are uh, no buildings more than two stories people will not believe because people know that new york is full of tall buildings like that our description of god cannot be different from what is in the shastras this is very important but in what happened in the general course of india hinduism and all that we have forgotten this and we are thinking that whatever the sadhu says is right now you have a guru he can say what he wants i have a guru what is he can say what he wants my guru says that you can have unlimited sense gratification there are some gurus who said that and i can do that that's because that my and your guru has said something you can follow this is all nonsense <laughs> nonsense because the truth is eternal it's given in the shastras it's given by the truth himself therefore it's very very important to for us to present everything properly we can't also concoct we can't also sit here and talk whatever nonsense we want we must know and we must speak and what we speak must be in line with unless of course okay they will not go into that point the gopis in the transcendental world whatever they say the veda should follow they are so great that what they describe should be in vedas not that they should describe what is in the vedas they are very great we are not like that so but that we won't go into that topic so one more point i will say then we will stop which is that 
this so krishna is his body is not made of matter it is not made of spirit so aldo prabhupada says here that krishna's body is not material in one sense it is not spiritual also aldo it is actually supreme krishna also is saying that the prabhupada is saying the purpose it is a source of everything aham sarvasya prabhu everything is coming from me so krishna's nature is cannot be understood so easily unless krishna reveals it this is the meditation on krishna shakti shaktiman vedam there are so many shaktis which we can loosely translate as energies and shaktiman is the energetic there are energies and there is the energetic now we are also when we eat we are energetic we can work and if we don't eat we are very tired when we are thinking when is the prasadam but the energies of krishna cannot work without krishna imagine krishna's position no one can work without energy but krishna no one now no energy can work without krishna isn't that amazing so how can you understand this krishna you can if krishna reveals himself and krishna is not going to reveal himself whimsically if we act is a foolish atheistic class of people they think that they can challenge god's existence and god is obliged to prove himself for its foolishness just like if i go near a, a post box and say oh there is no post office there is no post office there is no postmaster everything is happening automatically here it is not that the postmaster will come running from his office and say no no we i exist <laughs> he is not bothered you can say whatever you want but if you put a, stamp, a letter with stamp he will send it whether you believe in him or not like that by foolish challenging we cannot expect krishna to reveal himself to us no krishna is the supreme therefore if we actually follow the process given by krishna krishna is very kind he says in kali yuga it's very very difficult people are busy doing mca uh, but still if you simply chant my name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and if you read shravanam kirtanam if you actually read the books of shila prabhupada and kirtanam if you do kirtan that is chanting hare krishna then slowly slowly you can krishna will reveal in proportion to our interest and desire Azir. So Krishna's nature, we must ajananto param bhava. And Krishna says, we must understand that Krishna's nature is so amazing that everything comes just like you have wood. From this wood, the fire will come. But wood's nature is different from fire. Similarly, from Krishna comes spirit and matter. But Krishna is different from both. even when the wood is burning actually wood is different from the fire it creates so and krishna's energies are unlimited uh, uh, usually a little uh, the wood when you burn the wood uh, after some time the wood is finished and there is no fire krishna is not like that krishna's energies are eternal and ever expanding very great god therefore he is called bhagavan what does bhagavan mean it comes from the root word bhagya bhagya means fortunate bhaga also means opulences it is also the root of bhagya the most fortunate one because 
only he is existing with all the energies he is eternal he is a supreme controller that's a great position isn't it everybody wants to be like that but krishna is not automatic automatically like that so krishna is a great mystery but by good fortune if we take up the process sooner or later krishna will reveal himself to everybody then one can see krishna one can talk with krishna one can do things with krishna we can go and play with krishna you can dance with krishna everything is possible and the opulence of krishna's world is unimaginable unimaginable it's all there in the shastras even the prabhupad said even the opulence of the heavenly planets you cannot understand even in the heavenly planets there are mango trees where each mango is six feet big and when those mangoes are ripe they fall down and they break and there are rivers of mango juice in the heavenly planets and there are rivers of honey there are rivers of milk can you imagine these are all rivers and the bodies of the people in the heavenly planets they are fragrant up to 64 miles and they live for by our calculation hundreds of thousands of years and they never get old they 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 are, they are born in this heavenly planets they enjoy and they then leave the planet that is also there but they, there is no old age there is no disease it's a heavenly planet so the descriptions of heavenly planets are there in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam but shila prabhupada said that krishna himself says it is dukkalayam these are places of misery so the heavenly planets krishna says are places of misery compared to spiritual world why it is a place of misery it's so nice because prabhupada said it is like a, a bird who is imprisoned in a cage and even if somebody gives it a golden cage what's the use is imprisoned so the soul is imprisoned in matter the word durga means dur means difficult ga means to go from so we say durga but she is actually durga devi she is the master of the present house so from where it is very difficult to get out it's called durga prison so we are in prison how does it matter in the prison whether you are having an you know nice a cell or a bad cell you are still a prisoner that much intelligence one should have so uh, the opulence of the spiritual world cannot be imagined but it is real and in that spiritual world unlimited spiritual entities are enjoying eternally with krishna but we have come to the material world because we wanted to be independent of krishna instead of trying to enjoy with god we are trying to enjoy like god and we are suffering but we do not know how to give up this suffering people are suffering so much that even if they get a little bit of relief from anything they are happy because people are suffering and anything a nice, little bit nice but even this krishna consciousness is nice when if you sit and hear krishna consciousness you forget all your suffering right like you've been sitting for half an hour aren't you happy you've forgotten all material things you're actually enjoying spiritual bliss it's a fact so it is not that we are not giving people relief only this motivational speakers are giving but people want everything cheap if you speak about krishna they are thinking you are not speaking about us we are the ones we are suffering but you are saying krishna is this krishna is that but you idiot <laughs> if you hear krishna all your problems will go away they don't know that if you simply hear about krishna if you simply hear about krishna all our problems will go away motivational speakers are you know people think why are you speaking about krishna i should speak about myself 
Speaking a very important point. So, any questions or comments? Class over. Hare Krishna. You have any questions? Can I ask him? Hmm? You have? Yeah. Yes. No. We know that the consciousness comes from the soul. We are not the body, but we are the spirit soul. Consciousness comes from the soul. But the scientists used to say uh, that consciousness is a product of reaction of matter. No, is it still the same stand of the scientists that they're still researching to find out matter creates consciousness? Or have they come to the acceptance that soul is the cause of consciousness? He's asking a question that according to Bhagavad Gita, we understand consciousness is not material. But scientists think that consciousness is produced at the, some point of interaction. He's asking this question because uh, I'm the head of the scientific wing of his con. There are scientists there with PhDs. So he's asking that question. So um, are the scientists still thinking consciousness arises from complex interaction of material elements? Or they accept that consciousness is non-material? That is his question. Scientists, by consciousness, we generally mean the sense of I. Isn't it? Awareness, experience, it's all possible through consciousness. If you would drive a nail on a wall, the wall doesn't say it's painting. But if somebody pinches you, it's, oh, it's painting, right? So, be, so consciousness, there's a difference between conscious beings and unconscious beings. There's a difference between a stone and a human being or even an animal. So from where is this consciousness coming? The consciousness that is not material and the consciousness that scientists say is coming from matter are two different consciousness. And both are correct. So if you don't know that scientists are right, then you cannot know that consciousness is non-material. But scientists are wrong in thinking that the matter as they are studying now, the brain and the neurons and other things, their interaction is causing that material consciousness. They're wrong because it involves more subtle material elements mind, intelligence, false ego, and all that. But they are open to their current notion of matter being wrong and other superior consumptions of matter coming. So they are right about the consciousness as they define. But you also think consciousness the way they think, that whatever I'm feeling now awareness and all of this is consciousness. And then if you say consciousness is non-material, you're wrong. Because that consciousness is different from what we now feel as awareness. What we now feel as awareness is entirely material. The soul has his own consciousness that is very different from this. To separate the two is the main idea of yoga. Because matter is so complex, we have been fooled into thinking we are this I, we are this mind, we are this, you know, intelligence, we are this body. Because the mind is connected to the body so beautifully and, you know, it's just a great science. So generally, Devotees may say, scientists are saying my consciousness is material, but our position is that Prabhupada said consciousness is spiritual. But you must know that the 
consciousness that Prabhupada is talking about and Shastras are talking about and the consciousness that scientists are talking about are very different. Is that a surprise to you? Generally, we use the term Jada and Chetana. Right? So, Chetana is also two types, like material Chetana and Adhyatmic Chetana. According to this definition, what you explain? You are, you are using these words, but you may not know what these words mean. You are saying Jada, Chetana, matter, spirit. But you have to define them, no? If what you think a spirit is actually matter, then how are you going to say spirit is non-material? You have heard the word consciousness and you have heard that it is different from matter. But you don't know what is matter, then how can you know what is non-matter? Are you following? Huh? Uh, but my question uh, is that I from what you are uh, explaining, I would understand that matter has separate kind of consciousness and spirit at, has different kind of consciousness. At, at high levels. Okay. At the level of mind, matter is capable of thinking, willing and feeling. At the level, subtle level, subtle mind. You are saying subtle, it doesn't make a difference. What do you mean by subtle? We don't even see gross. I told you that in the morning. So, wow, you, you don't have a license to use words. The problem is when you speak, like you go to the college and you say there's subtle matter, gross matter, nobody questions. Okay, you're saying something. But scientists will question. When you speak to ordinary people, they assume you know something. If they come here, they're innocent people. They may assume, okay, he's speak, sitting there, he's speaking, he may know something, let us hear. But scientists say, I know, you don't know. Now prove to me that you know. So nobody can say, bring something new unless you prove to them. Their methods of proof are different. But they define the terms very carefully. So you are using words, but I don't know what you mean by those words. I know what I would mean by those words. I want to hear from you what is, how do you define Chada? Ah, for that, one has to begin, you know, um, and that is a separate discussion. But at least if you ask the question, I'm obliged to answer. So the point is that Krishna says, Nasate vidyate bhavo, nabhavo vidyate sataha ubayo rapi drishtanto. Only by studying both, the sages have come to know. Current scientists are studying matter without studying consciousness. They, in fact, as he said, they think that everything can be reduced to matter. One sense they are right. But spiritualists, many people study consciousness without ignoring matter, Jagat Mitya. Both are wrong. The Vaishnavas study both matter and spirit and they understand both. So it's very important. So uh, you have to first understand what is meant by the word soul. Because of a lot of punya in past lives, many of us actually accept there is a soul follow. Just like if you have seen a motorcycle, if you have seen a cycle, a motorcycle, a scooter, auto rickshaw, a car and then a plane, you can extend that and say there must be a rocket. You have not seen the rocket, but you believe you accept it exists. Your acceptance uh, without seeing a rocket that rocket exists is not same as an absolutely illiterate fellow on the street who neither knows, knows nothing. And he also says, ah, I believe there is a rocket. You know a lot more. So like that, although people may not have seen God, those who are pious and who have gone to heavenly planets and all and come back, when they accept by extension, there must be a spiritual world. 
their intuition and experience is greater than someone who has always gone to lower planets and come back. Therefore, uh, so due to piety, we understand certain things by past experience, but it may not be very authentic. So soul, by soul, we should understand. Uh, if you ask most people, have you seen a soul? They'll say no, right? Have you seen a soul? But actually, you are only seeing a soul. But you don't know. Isn't it? Just like we say, am I seeing a man or not? I am seeing the man. I can't say I'm only seeing a yellow shirt. So when we say Ashok has come, it's like saying yellow shirt has come. If I sell, if I tell you, oh, yellow shirt has come, you, you should get offended. Why are you calling yellow shirt, you know? Like that, by bodily identification, we say, is my brother, my sister, they should get offended. So why are you calling me my brother? You know? I'm a spirit soul. No, they uh, yes, I'm a spirit soul. We are foolish. So actually, due to the soul, the matter forms a body. So actually, you are seeing the soul, but you are mistaking for body. This, this is our position. Now, but you are saying soul. Soul is different, non-material. How you can say? This you don't know. Isn't it? A plus B equal to 5. A is 0. How much is B? 5. So soul plus matter is this form. But when the soul leaves, like you stop the current after sometimes fan stops, like that, this body's form goes away. So soul plus matter is form, but matter has got no form. So where is the form coming from? Soul. So this, this cloth has got this shape because he has got a shape. Of course, the form of the soul is vitiated because of mind and intelligent false ego. That's another science. That's why the same soul, all souls have form, but they take different external forms. Cat, dog, cockroach. Isn't it? And that is uh, another science. So I'm just giving approximations. First, we must understand what is a soul. When you understand soul, then you can understand matter. Right now, we have some little understanding of matter. And we are imagining that soul is not this matter. That is, that is Alega. When people are just simple people here, they'll say, ah, oh, he knows. Just like the body is changing from youth to childhood to youth to old age. You know, the soul goes into another body. And we say, and we argue. Even if I give you, a, I have myself argued like that before when, I used to preach in colleges or anywhere, that if I give you a picture of a, a small baby, three-year-old baby, and if I give a picture of an old man or a young man, doesn't matter, you'll say these are two different things. This is a baby and this is a young man. But that person will say, no, it's the same me. It's my photo only. Here I'm young and here I'm a baby. So although body is changing, you're saying I'm the same. And that unchanging thing is the soul. This is not a very intelligent argument. This is not the argument Krishna is giving. Huh? Yeah. We think like that because you don't understand that words. Prabhupada elsewhere has pointed it out. But it's all a secret. Because this idea has been discussed by Greeks 2000 years ago. But they have discussed it with respect to matter. They are asking the question, they will take you to your river and they will ask, what is this? And you say, it's a river. And by river, what do you mean? You mean all the trees on the bank or you mean the sand or you mean the water? So you say, obviously, I mean the water, right? Water is the river. Then he's talking to you, okay, very nice. So when, where were you? I didn't see you for two weeks. Oh, I was going to Bombay this and that. And after five minutes, he's saying, 
is this the same river? And he said, of course, it's the same river. Said, no, but the water has changed. So how you say it's the same? You said water is the river. And the water has changed. How you say it's the same river? So they will argue the same thing that you are saying. Body is changing. The identity is not changing. They'll say for us, then they, they will say that does it mean that the river is a soul, not the body, not the water? If you say that, everything is soul. Table also is changing. You say table has become old. That means there must be a table independent of all these changes. Then what will you answer? Nothing. You don't know. So what you are saying is okay. They ignore Aspanyata Dehe for simple people. That's why Prabhupada said today morning, quote, it's okay for those people. Because they were pious. Also, they could even see five elements, and, and they also had all of them had you know the experiences of heavenly planets and all that. It was not a secret for old people, old time people. When I was a child, there was no movie that was not a Puranic movie. This idea of social novels and all came only in the 40s and all that. I was born in the 50s. So, you know, there was no... So, so things have changed. So, all the movies will have Indra, Chandra, Varuna. That's, it was a part of... That is what the part of daily life was. Now, nobody knows. So, what is true of soul is also to a great extent true of subtle matter. So all these things you have to know. I don't want to speak more about that because part of my scientific work is confidential. We'll have to wait till it comes out. Because you'll not get your association again without if you can elaborate. Yeah, yeah. But uh, are you following my point? For, for this question, Prabhupada has given the answer in first canto. So, it is not a matter of you saying, yeah, 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 actually, you know, according to uh, Vedic knowledge, you know, even rivers have demigods, I mean, the goddesses, we talk about um, personalities, you know, Ganga, Mother Ganga, and this, and that's not what is being spoken here. That is separate. This is about when matter is changing, if there is an unchanging principle, is it different from that matter or same? This is the so that is true even for matter, even gross matter, it is true. Not only for subtle matter. So all this you have to scientifically understand. So you have to be, at least we should be conscious that are aware that I am using things. Actually, I know matter from there, I am deriving my understanding of consciousness. But you should know spirit and derive the understanding of matter. So one example is that you see everywhere souls. The souls are in dress. So a learned Pandita is not bewildered by that. What is that verse? Pandita Sam Vidya Venaya Sampanne Brahmani Gavi Hastini Suni Chaiva Safa Kesha Pandita Samadarshina. So one who has become a Pandit, he shows, he knows. If you're going on the street, that whether there is an auto driver or a cyclist or a bus driver or car driver, everybody is valuable. You can't say, oh, only that person is going in Cadillac car. He is valuable, that driver. This fellow is just going in an old bicycle. He's not valuable. No. Everybody is. So Prabhupada said, you cannot simply kill another living entity saying, I'm more important. Therefore, um, Pandita is able to see everybody equally. We cannot. The Pandita can see a tiger and also understand its spirit soul. The Pandita can see a great snake and also another person. It's okay, fine. Aridas Thakur was sitting in the same cave as a huge serpent. He is chanting and the snake is coming and going there, okay. But people are not okay. They came and told uh, Aridas Thakur. 
we, we can't come here. You are sitting there. You are a pandita. You are just seeing everything equally. We can't. We are very worried. People are worried. All right, Arjuna Thakur said, I'll change. I'll go. As soon as Arjuna Thakur said that, everybody saw that snake came. And very fast it went out and never came back. Because that snake was thinking it will be an offense if, you know, if I let the pure devotee go and I stay here. We don't know what, is, what was the equation going on there. Prabhupada explains that. That's Pandita, Samadarshana. I can't be like that. Even if I dream a snake, I get afraid. What to speak of a real snake? They're ordinary people. I'm just a fool. Just because I'm speaking all of this, it doesn't mean anything. Fool is a fool is a fool. So I'm just a fool. You know, but somehow I'm understanding a little bit. Oh, oh this that's because the service Prabhupada gave me. For that I needed this knowledge. So everything has to be taught properly. Simply reading will not help. In Tamil, we have a thing. E to Surakai, Hari Kudavadu. E to Surakai means there was a picture of Surakai. Surakai is good. Some vegetable. There is a picture of potato. You can't take alu, make alu sabji with the picture. Meaning that you have to have realizations and all that. But I, I also don't have. But the point is that uh, spiritual knowledge has to be taught. Just like you cannot read a physics book and become a physicist. You cannot read a um, um, computer science book and become a computer. You have to go to college and you have to study. That is what I was telling a little bit in the morning. We have to, has to be, education has to be there. So you raised a very deep topic and I'm not feeling like going into all the details, but I'm just trying to let you know that there's thoda kuch bahut hai isme. Is that, was that clear at least that there's more to be learned here than what we know? Yeah, there's a lot to be learned. Mm. That's what we was. So you have to be careful. Achintyoyam, avatyoyam, like the soul is. No, no we may say whatever we want, achintyoyam. Don't you, you say, I don't know anything. Then we are again talking like you know. I don't know. Achintya, <laughs> this, that. What is achintya? You simply you, you say. Do you have any papers for you have written on this? Like, no, yeah, why should I write? Really? And Prabhupada says, I'll write. This is not for everybody. See, in the book, why is Krishna always, see, this topic is called the most confidential knowledge, more confident. He's saying everything is here, secret. Don't think you can just, suppose I told you that I'm sending you a secret message. Do you think anyway, everybody can read and know? Then it's not a secret. So Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is telling openly it's a secret. So how is it that we just read and we can know? No. But that's also good. We are reading and we are following and that, that's nice. That's also same as, you know, for somebody understanding. It's absolute. But we must be very careful. So you first say with, before you use big words like achintya and all that, oh, it looks like I don't know anything. That is good. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, you've given us a Altogether, a, a you know, wonderful uh, aspect of Bhagavad Gita, perspective of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. So I think uh, we should all look forward for your systematic classes that you mentioned in, this morning. Yes, I'm going. Uh, yeah, it will be very, course, very helpful for us. Yeah. Online course on Bhagavad Gita and modern science. Yes, bro. It will be one lakh tuition fee <laughs> because I want to raise funds for the Prabhupada's Institute. 60 crores. No, it will it'll be not expensive, but use that and speak slowly, clearly. The meditators, uh, they used to meditate in the forest. I can't hear. The meditators who used to meditate in the forest, they... The meditators go to meditate in the forest, oh, like that you yeah. speak. Uh. Uh, so, uh, they didn't have... Uh, fear. They... Pass. They didn't have fear about. Oh, again, Punjab mail is. Come. A fear about uh, those uh, lions. Shana, and, lions. So how they got those knowledge that they like? We what we are missing that we cannot. When we are chanting, we are 
No, so because they are punyatmas from past lives. That Krishna says in the in this life he renews it. In the Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, he says. So it's coming. How you came to Krishna consciousness, so many else are not coming due to some sukriti in past life. So they have very great sukriti. Not so easy to become a sage. All souls are not equal. There's Taratamya. You, you, we can't just suddenly become a great Vasishta, Vishwamitra. And that is a different category of souls. We are nowhere near that. Even if we take millions of births, we will be only like this. Because we are in our level. And they are in their level. Those kind of souls we have not even seen. Powerful personalities. So, well, due to past punya. Also, they they are all powerful. Somebody is a demigod. He is by nature great. The people are there, Ambani and Rockefeller. You know, of course, these are next life. He can be a cockroach. We don't know. But the sages are not like that. They never go down. They're always Urdunga Chanti Satvasto Madhya Tishtanti Rajasa Adhoga Chanti Tamasa. So they are, they don't come down. Bhagavatam is explained that the great sages have gone to the forest now and other planets. So when Kali comes and kills everybody, they will come back. Same sages. The next Satyaga will begin. Nobody needs to teach. They know. They will start agnyas and everything. A great souls. A great souls. Try to understand that you may not know anything. Please be very conscious of it. Now you can say... How do you know that I don't know anything? <laughs> the answer is, I also read all the books you read. And I also joined when I was young in ISKCON. And I have preached before you were born in colleges. And I have made hundreds of devotees who said, because of your preaching, we became devotees. Later, I realized I was a complete idiot who didn't know anything. When I said Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead, when I said I'm not the body, I'm soul, I was talking nonsense. I didn't know. Because I didn't know the, what I, this meant. I gave an example, right? Not here, where? Yesterday, somewhere I gave class. Prabhupada said, if a baby hears from the father that it is microphone and repeat it, it's perfect. Isn't it? So we are foolishly thinking whatever Prabhupada said, if we repeat, we are perfect. It's not Supreme Personality, I got it. No, you don't know what you're talking. Just like the baby says, microphone. Oh, somebody says, oh, really? Microphone. What does microphone do? Huh? Then I said unto the father, father, what does microphone do? Father says, okay, you tell him it's an, it amplifies sound. My microphone amplifies sound. Oh, very nice. What is amplification? Huh? Oh, let me go to my... This is our position. So when the child says this is microphone, the father knows it is perfect, not the child. So Prabhupada actually said, you're a fool. But we are thinking he has made us great. We are that idiotic. You are such a stupid fool that you are thinking Prabhupada has made you perfect. If I simply, Prabhupada said, you just simply repeat what I say, it's perfect. That's all. We are thinking I'm sick and it's perfect. No, you should think I'm speaking, I'm a fool, number one. I don't know what I'm speaking, but Prabhupada knows. Does it make sense? That took me more than 35 years to understand. Before that, I was also a fool who was thinking I'm preaching colleges. I went, e -e bolo, o bolo. And I preached much better than most people. Most people learn college preaching by listening to me. The fact. In the 80s, right? how old you were in the 80s? Zero, not even born. So before you were born, I was preaching in colleges. Try to understand that. And I found out it was complete nonsense. 
That you have to learn from the master. He's not going to, you can't teach anybody. But for that, we have to be a recipient. Are you following? You're doing college preaching? Yes. No? Somebody, he said in the morning college, you, be very careful, very humble. That is a great talent. People will respect you for that. What is it that I know? What is it that I remember a long time ago in the 80s, I went to a college in Bombay and there were some students practicing Krishna consciousness. And somebody said, what does it mean that the soul is one ten thousand tip of the hair? You know, because uh, the tip of the hair will be one air molecule, which will be a very complicated molecule. And if you, the tip, if you want to take it, might be one electron that's much smaller than one ten thousand of the hair, tip of the hair. It's millions of times smaller. And people, and they have, at least they claim that they can see the electron in an electron microscope or something. So what does it mean to say? He said, I don't know. I don't have the realization. It was long back. He simply said, I don't know. He should be able to say, I don't know publicly. Well, you cannot know everything. So Prabhupada said, preach according to your realization. So you said, so first of all, you have to learn what each word means in Bhagavad Gita. Soul, God, matter, kala, karma. Everything you have to know scientifically. That has to be taught. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Premanandi. Hare Krishna.